got the lovely Del Wilson with me, oh, yeah. my PT. Um, he's also world champion um, for long cycle press. Veteran class. Veteran class. <laughs> Doesn't look that old though. Um, and we're here surrounded by kettlebells um, because we're going to do a kettlebell strength. Strength and conditioning session. Kind of a hit session. So think about all your cardio, think about all your strength stuff, and you combine the two and you get kettlebells. So it's perfect. Love it. Um, so I've got nice shiny new kettlebells because I've not been doing it for very long. Dale's got his trusty old battered ones that he has been using for a long time, clearly. Um, and that's why he's so good at it. Um, and we're going to do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Um, 20 rounds, so it's a good um, 20 minute hit, and yeah, join in, but before you join in, it's probably worth watching the tu tutorial that you've done. Yes, uh, there's a tutorial at the end of, at the end of this video, um, just 10 minutes long, it just goes through the, the basics of the exercises that we're doing, it's not comprehensive, but it'll give you an idea. But also, in the 30 second rest period, I'll just quickly do a few, few reps of each exercise, just as a reminder, so you know what you're doing. Brilliant. Good luck. And it's blowing a gale, it's quite cold. It's not raining. <laughs> it's not raining, so fingers crossed it stays like that. We're going to do some mobility first, yep, aren't we? Yeah, we are, yeah. Right. So start simple first, just with a neck forward, back, do that five times. It's got to be good for the chin, no double chin. Shoulders, so take one arm, keep the thumb pointing upwards, just going to rotate it all the way around. Like a windmill. So lead with the thumb. I'm wearing these things on my wrists, um, kettlebell guards. They've got a plastic um, guard underneath the material and it just stops your wrist from getting bruised Outside. when you're working with the kettlebell. Yep. Doesn't mean you're a wuss. No, not at all. That's why I wear them. Just helps with the pressure of the bell sitting on your wrist all the time. It's not so much a bad form thing. Initially, when you're learning this stuff, you can bang the kettlebell quite a lot on your wrist. So these will really help. But I don't do that anymore, but I still wear them just because of the pressure of the bell on my wrist. We're quite skinny wrist. <laughs> okay, next we're going to one palm up, one down. We're just going to rotate oh, the shoulders. So you're spinning, yeah. Straight-ish. I get a bit further down each time. Come back up. Stretch back. Five of those. I never used to be able to touch my toes when I was 16 stone. Oh, it's so nice to be able to do that now. <laughs> I'm not exactly the master of flexibility. <laughs> Now to side to side, so arms up, and swing across one side, other side. We're waving. It's too early for this. It is too early for this. This is hurting my waist. But we love it. Now hip circles, the hands on hips. 
this is where you look sexy. <laughs> grinding. <laughs> it always makes me laugh doing this. This one? Yeah. It's worth it though. Other side direction. Other side. Okay. Cool. Now one last leg swing, so leg up, just stretch it out. Oh, I can't get my balance when I do these.
I started doing these, Del, I did about an 8 kg, wasn't it? I think that's right, yeah. So I've just gradually built up strength. Stop! Well done. Okay. Next up, we've got goblet squats. Goblet squat. Oh, I love a squat. The point about squats fine if you're not comfortable using a weight. Okay. Just hold a kettlebell. <sighs> Upside down all this way up, just feels more comfortable. Ooh. Keep your elbows in and sink into the squat. Make sure your elbows go to the inside of the thigh to keep your knees oh. nice and wide. Three, two, one, down. And we're out of sync now. Cowbell stuff now, press up. Just work the chest. Now I love press up, but I couldn't do 36. 36 is my QB, but I couldn't do more than a few. Come on, Back in January. Guns of steel. Are we ready? We've got five seconds. Do as many as you can. Do them on your knees if you can't do full ones. Nose to the mat if you can. Oh. And stop. Oh, that well, was guys, a long thirty seconds. It was right. <laughs> All right, another Woo. set of swings. Swings. I love the swings because they really get the heart rate going. Yep. Great cardio swings. Yeah, that's that's the PT version. Great cardio. <laughs> Great people loose right. as well. Great your bum. Five, four, three, two, one. These always do hurt my hands though. <laughs> I end up with big calluses on my hands. What's wrong with that? <laughs> like some sort of man who does manual labour. Build up. <laughs> Rather than a consultant. Stop! Woo! I love those. They're my favourite. Squat and press. Squat and press. Okay, so back the bell. Feet shoulder width apart. Ooh. Squat down. Other arm come up, count bounce. Let's come up. Make sure you go straight into the press. I'm going to use a 14 for this. Don't, don't pause. Of... Sorry. No, sorry. Don't pause and then press. Three, two, one, down. No way to down to come up. <laughs> I find I can go slightly heavier with this one, which you use more of the legs. Is that right? Yep. You can. We'll get the timing right. And stop. Well done, do another one. <laughs> We're going to do that on the other side. Other side, yep. <coughs> I'm using a 14 for this, where I used a 12, a 12 on the single arm push press. It's great cardio exercise as well. Yeah, I'm out of breath. Yeah. <laughs> Start with two bells. Five, four, three, two, one. I can't believe you would do this with two bells. Squat down as far as you can, comfortably. Five for parallel. 
is ideal. One more. Dumbbells for safety, you don't have to reach out bells, but it can topple, so just be cautious. Using bells, make sure you get right over the top of them. Right, five, in position, three, two, one. Put one hand into the rib cage, slowly down. Keep your body flat. Shoulders square to each other. down to almost on the ground, not quite. Oh, so you do have to leg day. And stop. Oh. <laughs> Good. All right, the other side. Other side. Getting hot now. <laughs>
24, so we can forgive him. We're going to do the other side, same move. Only 30 seconds, that's all it is. Okay. Get ready. I know, we okay. Five seconds left. <laughs> Two, one, down. Always keen. That's very likely. Very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's easily done. 
done when you're tired. Yeah. Yeah, a bit hard. It's very hard, isn't it? Yeah, I'm out of breath again. Ah. Right, other side. Other side. Nearly there. Yeah, we're getting there, folks. Just about two minutes left, I think, of yeah. actual exercise. Nothing. Five seconds. Are we ready? The third round. No, you're alright, Bill. Come on, catch up.
I start on the front. Press up position. Right. Don't look to me for inspiration on how to get this stretch looking good because <laughs> it's so stiff. So you're just going to press it up as high as you can. straighten this front leg as much as you can. Ow! This is hamstring. This side. <laughs> He's evil. Andrew's leg's a lot straighter than mine. Oh, it hurts though.
flows quite easy, easy into another stretch. So just try and remember the sequence. Oh man. Right, from here you're gonna lie back. Lie back. Oops. Got one leg over the other leg. Hi everyone, right, I'm on pause at the moment just so you know you've not got a technical glitch. Right, I'm hoping some of you would have arrived here um, before doing the uh, the kettlebell hit. If you're not too sure on some of the moves, you should practice these in isolation really first before you uh, put them together in a, in a big circuit. Okay, so we'll start with swings, or more specifically the hip hinge, so I'll get myself moving. So just place your fingers into your hip crease and push your hips backwards. You should feel some tension in your hamstrings and you'll make sure your calves remain perpendicular to the floor. You're keeping a flat back. You'll see it better from the side. So fingers in the hip crease, push back, calves are staying perpendicular to the ground. Feel the tension in your hamstrings. Just keep your shoulders back, head in neutral, flat back. Simple. So that is the position you'll be in at the midpoint of the swing, which I will show you now. Start with the bell slightly in front of you, so when you pick it up it will straight away move backwards. Start with the smaller swings first, then build up. By rep three you're into a full swing. So make it a quick, sharp, snappy movement. Bring your hips and knees to extension at exactly the same time. So there. Squeeze your glutes as you come up. And brace your core. Right, and make sure your fore, your wrists are right against the, your inner thigh there. So the power is being generated from the hips. So you need to make contact with your wrist to your inner thigh. So as you come, so if you go, to go too low, you lose that contact. Then you're losing the power from your hips. It doesn't work. So make sure the bell stays quite high. And your wrist hits the inner thigh. So as you 
power through the hips, that power is straight through into the kettlebell to move it upwards. Show you a few from the side. Don't overextend at the top, you just want to stand upright, not go too far back. Keep the bell reined in, don't let it go out too far in front of you, so keep your shoulders pulled back, chest up, one breath cycle per rep. So breathe in at the top, then out there, so in there, out there. Uh, that's the swing. Okay, so next up is the push press. So first of all, just a quick word about this. Make sure you get your hand all the way through the handle so it sits at the base of your palm. Get a bit closer. Okay, you don't want it sitting there so your wrist is all bent. That's a terrible place to press from. Okay, so make sure as you clean the bell up to the top, you feed, feed the hand through. Use the other hand if you need to. So feed the hand all the way through the handle so the fingers should be relaxed. You should be able to wiggle your fingers. Now this is a push press, so we're going to use the legs to drive the bell up. It means you can use a bit more weight than a, than a strict press. Make sure you have contact with your arm against your torso so it's not flapping around. So make sure you bring the arm down so it touches your body like so. Then you do a little squat, although not a normal squat. I'll show you from the side in a minute. And make sure you then use that power from that squat to get the bell in the air. So I'll show you from the side, it'll be a bit clearer. So it's not conventional squat, you want to try and keep that connection with your upper arm to your torso. If you do a normal squat, you lose that connection, so it's flapping around, so it's no good. So make sure you keep that connection, so you're sliding your knees forward. So it's not really like a squat really, it's just, a, I don't know what you call it, but just make sure you keep that connection, so then as you come out of the, squ the squat, you're powering that bell straight up. It should feel significantly easier than if you weren't doing the little squat. You should be using a bit more weight for sure. So that is the push press. Right, next up we're doing uh, new squats. We'll do just um, a bodyweight squat first, or just an air squat. Right, I want you to feet approximately shoulder width apart, maybe slightly wider. Don't have them towed out too far. Mine are actually towed out quite a long way there, like Donald Duck. But you need to try and create some torque in, in your legs, in your system. So if you kind of imagine spreading the ground with your feet, so you kind of spread them outwards, take up any slack in your joints. At the top of the movement, just squeeze your bum there and squeeze your core, or tighten your core. Just squeeze at the top. Go down as far as you feel comfortable to go down. Think about driving your knees out over your toes. Don't let your knees collapse inwards. So this is the goblet squat. So you hold a kettlebell. It hasn't got to be upside down. If you've got um, a cast type bell with a tapered handle, you can hold it the right way up. Keep your elbows tucked in. Bring them down inside your thigh. That way you can assure that your knees are kept out, out and not collapsing inwards. Think about trying to keep your calves not perpendicular to the ground, but as perpendicular as you can keep them. So sit your hips back or sit the hamstrings back. And again, as you come to the top, to squeeze your glutes. That will help reset your pelvis, make sure it's in the right place. Brace your core and then go back down. And that's the goblet squat. Right, okay, this is the squat and press, so feet about shoulder width apart again. This time you will, you will have to move your elbow away from the torso as you go down. So make sure that you power the press with the squat. So as you come up, move straight into the press. Don't stop and then press. Okay, this is a squat and press, otherwise known as a thruster. It's a great cardio exercise, especially with two bells. So as soon as you get to the top of the squat, even slightly before, you're starting to press that bell up ahead. 
try and get your fires down to parallel if you can. If you can't, don't worry, just go as far as you can. So this is not this is what you shouldn't do. Don't stop and then press. Make sure you power it up in one movement. So that's a thruster. Now we look at Renegade Rose. A few safety things here. I'll show you first of all what can happen if you don't get right over the top of the bells. So if you if you go back too far this way, they can topple. Be careful with the bells that you use. If you've got competition bells like I'm, I'm using here, they've got quite wide bases, so they're fine to use. Uh, so I just took my hand off there. The idea is to transfer the weight over to one side, then pull the other side up. So effectively, you should be able to take your hand off the bell and balance. So push down one side like driving it into the ground and pull the other side up, hand into rib. Show you from the front. Another thing to bear in mind here is that you uh, must keep your shoulders square. Think of, uh, of this as like an anti-rotation exercise. So you're not, trying, you're not twisting, you're trying to actually remain quite still, like in a plank. So don't do what I'm doing now. Try and keep your shoulders square to each other, like so. Don't bang them down, be in control all the time. That's a renegade row. If you're using bells with quite small bottoms, like the cast bells, just be careful they're not going to topple. If you have hexagonal dumbbells, use those instead. So this is now the split squat, this is the final one. Make sure your legs are far enough apart so when you're at the bottom position, both are at 90 degrees. So you can, you can rack the kettlebell like so, or you can hold it down by your side. We're doing all these on one side first, then switching to the other side. So that's an alternative way to hold the kettlebell. Wow, I'll cut that down to under 10 minutes. I'm proud of that. Right, enjoy.